Episode 7 of Constellation is here, and I think it's safe to say this is one of the most intense and eventful episodes so far. And one pretty major thing happened at the end of this episode that if you weren't paying close enough attention, you may have missed, so be sure to stick around for that later in the video. All right, let's break down this episode titled Through the Looking Glass, which is of course another Alice in Wonderland reference, which I think perfectly encapsulates everything that happened in this episode. As always, if you like videos like this, be sure to subscribe. Let's get to it. This episode picks up where we left off with Red Alice seeing Joe outside the cabin, but when she steps outside, Joe is gone. However, Alice can hear Joe's footsteps and heads out to look for her. As Alice passes Joe, she too can hear her daughter's footsteps, indicating that these two are closer than ever to finding each other again. After the intro, Joe is complaining of eye pain as she and Blue Alice are discussing their FaceTime call before the accident. Joe asks Alice what she remembers, and Alice says they were discussing the cow, which is confusing to Joe because she doesn't remember anything about about it before the accident. Alice asks Joe what the Cal device does, and Joe says, it's a quantum experiment that's supposed to capture a quantum superposition where one thing can exist in two places at the same time. Now, I found this scene to be a bit annoying for a couple of reasons. It just seems like Joe, who came from a universe where the Cal didn't exist and she had no prior knowledge of it, now seems to know quite a bit about it. Also, back in the first episode, the Joe that did know about the Cal device said that it was a device used for capturing a new state of matter only present in zero gravity. Now, that definition of the Cal device is very different from the one this Joe just described. So I'm just not a fan of how they conveniently slide in this exposition here in the second to last episode of this show. But let, let's just go ahead and keep moving. Alice then plays a tape of what's supposed to be Joe just after the accident on the ISS, but instead they hear Paul talking to Command about Joe's death, which prompts Joe to stop the tape and put the cow away. As she's doing so, Alice seems to have figured out what's going on when she asks Joe if she seems the same, because she doesn't think Joe is her mom. They seem to agree that things aren't right, but that they need to work together to sort it all out. Next, we see a police caravan heading toward the cabin with Magnus, Frederick, and Henry inside. Henry says Irina is on her way and that she'll be the one who takes care of Joe. When Magnus asks Henry why he's there, Henry says, because this happened to me as well. And for me, this was a big oh snap moment. Like, I can't believe Henry is about to openly talk about this. Also, Frederick seemed like he was in on all of this and he knew all the secrets and kind of just was like looking out the window like, yeah, this isn't news to me. Of course, in the end, it didn't seem like that actually mattered. Maybe more will come from that next episode. But I really like the tension building that this one line brought to the episode. We cut back to Joe as she places the cowl in the shed, then heads out to the lake where she hears Alice screaming for her. Alice stumbles upon another version of their cabin with a cat and this painting of the changeling on the wall as she enters. We'll call this cabin one moving forward because things are about to get very convoluted with a whole lot of cats cabins in a whole lot of different universes, so this is cabin one. Upstairs, she finds a cabinet and climbs inside, where the door slams shut and traps her inside. Moments later, Joe finds her and takes her back to the other cabin. We again see the scene of Joe drawing her a bath and then going to get more hot water, but this time we see everything happening from Alice's perspective as Joe disappears and Alice finds herself in an empty bathtub back inside the cabin with Magnus from the last episode. When Magnus finds Alice and she explains everything that was happening, Magnus insists that Alice was dreaming. We then see Joe take the cowl and blue Alice as they head out across the lake in search for the other cabin. Next, we see Joe and Alice get into an argument when Alice calls Joe crazy and runs off. Joe chases after, leaving the cowl behind on the ground. And we then see red Alice leaving Magnus again to go back out in search of Joe when she finds the bead trail and the cowl. Magnus awakes to find red Alice has left and he too heads out into the night. Then back to blue Alice, who after leaving Joe finds another cabin and heads inside. This this time it's this painting of the angel kneeling, not the changeling being carried like we saw earlier. Also, the cat in this cabin is dead, so we'll call this one Cabin 2. Alice finds the tape recorder and heads upstairs where she finds the cabinet with the beads hung on the door when she calls out to Alice. At the same time, we also see Red Alice approaching a cabin as well. She heads inside and we don't see the main painting on the wall, but the cat's very much alive, so I think she's back in Cabin 1 again. Both Alices end up inside their respective cabinets, communicating with each other using the tape recorder. Magnus and Joe, each back in their own cabins, can hear the conversation between the Alices and they too go upstairs to the cabinets where they find tape recorders playing the conversation, indicating that there are now at least four realities, one for each of these cabinets. The two Alices 
agree to try to look at each other in the mirror, but in doing so, they lock themselves in. So Magnus calls the police, and Joe heads out again in search for the other cabins. But on her way, she leaves a lantern on the table that falls over and sets the cabin on fire. The two Alices talk to each other in the mirror when one tells the other that Joe is dead, at which point Joe notices the fire she started and heads back. During the drive back, Joe hears the two Alices having figured out what's really happened with the two Joes, and in the most heartbreaking moment of the show, Red Alice asks Blue Alice if she can have her mom back. Next, Magnus asks Henry what happened with him, and Henry says he was on his way back from the moon when his crew died from a depressurization issue. But after blacking out, he awoke to find them okay, but when he made it back to Earth, he wasn't okay. Magnus asked him how he got better, and Henry says he took his pills and threw himself into his work. At this point, the crew heads out to look for Alice and Joe. As Henry begins walking out, we see him grab his head the same way Joe does, indicating he feels the hole in in Bud's brain that he mentioned in an earlier episode. When this happens, Henry sees a vision of Bud and what looks like the glow of the cowl as he sets off towards it. Back with Joe, she runs into the burning cabin, but once inside, the flames disappear. But we do see flames in the glass or reflection of the painting, which is a tie back to the title of this episode, Through the Looking Glass. And this painting is, of course, of the angel kneeling, indicating that she's in cabin two with Blue Alice. Also, this time we have a dead cat and an alive cat, most likely another reference to Schrodinger's cat. Joe heads upstairs to find Blue Alice in the cabinet, who says Joe needs to speak through her in order to communicate to Red Alice, who's asking when Joe will come back. And Joe says she doesn't know how, but she'll try to work it out. We cut to Henry as he finds the cowl and sees more visions of Bud saying he's coming for him. Henry then sees the burning cabin and heads that way as well. As he's approaching the cabin, he's seeing what happened in the last episode with Bud and Paul, and as Bud pulls the trigger, it seems like the two of them, for some reason, swap back to their correct universes. This is pretty evident because Henry doesn't know the address of Bud's apartment when he calls 911, he can't see without his glasses, and he even tells Paul it's Henry. Just as the two Henrys switch places, Joe carries Blue Alice out of the burning cabin and hands her off to Bud before running back inside to search for Red Alice. Back outside, Bud throws Alice to the ground and says, who are you, kid? Another indication that he's not the same Henry that was just there. And he's confused as to how he got there and why he has all these new clothes on. So the big question here is, why did the two Henrys switch at this particular moment? At first, I started to go down this rabbit hole of maybe this swap happens whenever these characters are in the process of killing someone, particularly someone from a different universe. So if you go all the way back to when Henry and Bud first swapped places, there was the issue with his crewmates dying. So I thought, okay, maybe that's why they swapped in the first place. And then now you've got them swapping again because Bud's killing Paul, who was from a different universe. But then I went back to my original thought and the astronauts that he was with were from the same universe as him. So that just started to fall apart pretty quickly. So then I thought, well, maybe it's just because they're interacting with people from different universes. You've got Bud interacting with Paul, who are both from different universes, and then you've got Joe, who has Henry approaching her, and they're also both in the wrong universes. So maybe? Quite honestly, this is a very flimsy theory, but it's all I've got for now, and Truthfully, I'm just hoping one of you will be able to enlighten me as to why this switch happened, because it just doesn't make sense. So if you have an idea here, please let me know down in the comments. Joe comes out of the cabin to find Blue Alice unconscious on the ground and begins performing CPR. Red Alice shows up with some beads for Joe and says she doesn't feel Blue Alice anymore, leading her to think that maybe she had died. But Joe says she has to save Blue Alice and that Red Alice needs to go back to her dad, which she does. And when doing so, Red Magnus catches a brief glimpse of Joe for just a moment. Blue Magnus and the others arrive to find Joe having just resuscitated Alice, and a couple officers chase after her when she starts looking for Red Alice again. And this is where the big thing happens that I talked about in the beginning of the episode where I honestly didn't catch it at first, and if you're not paying attention to the background, you would have missed it as well. And it's the fact that Bud is laid out in the background, on the ground, and kind of people are just ignoring him for the most part, and they don't really address the fact that this is happening in this episode. So is he dead, or did he just pass out from everything going on? Big question marks here around Bud and Henry for sure, so very interested to see what's happening there in the next episode. All right, Red Magnus takes Red Alice back inside where she asks him if he saw her, to which he replies, I don't know. And they look up at the painting in their cabin, which is a crossover of the paintings with this one showing the angel being carried in place of the changeling. 
Finally, we see Alice in the hospital where she dreams, or should I say nightmares, a vision of Valia saying she can take Alice to her mother if she'll follow her. Alice awakes to find Magnus beside her, and he says Joe was taken by Irina to get help, and Alice says we need to get her back. Good. Miss. This is legit the hardest episode of television I have ever had to break down and analyze. There is so much. There's so much. With all the different paintings, cats, Alice's, Joe's, Henry's, Ma everything. This was tough. So I hope I was able to capture and make sense of everything that happened in this episode, but quite honestly, it's very hard to theorize how this is all going to end in the one episode we have left. And I'm hesitant to say this because it would be a real shame, but I have a very strong feeling we're not going to get all the answers in the finale. It just feels too big with way too many open loops for them to just nicely and neatly wrap it all up in the final episode. My best guess, and it pains me to say this, is that we're only gonna get a sort of conclusion here and a lot of the why and how all of these things are happening is gonna be left up to the viewer's interpretation, which is one of my least favorite things in storytelling and movies and television. I, it, it drives me crazy. I mean, to get some things that are left open to interpretation, I'm, I'm fine with that, but to not get the fundamentals of the how or the why would be a major letdown on a show that I've really enjoyed up to this point. So I hope I'm wrong. I really, really hope I'm wrong. I just have that feeling in my gut that I, that that's how it's gonna be. There's, it's just too big. I don't see how this all wraps up nicely in only one more episode, but all my fingers will be crossed as we move into the finale, and I hope I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong. All right, let me know what you thought of this one down in the comments. I read every single one, and I feel like we are all in this together as we're trying to piece this all together, make it all make sense as we move into the final episode. So please let me know what you're thinking and any theories you have down below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all after the finale.